With a densely populated urban environment sitting alongside an extensive green belt, Hong Kong is a city of contrasts. For those concerned with animal health and how such matters relate to human medicine, the former British colony is an important location. In April 2015, a team of academics from the University of Edinburgh held a two-day conference in association with the Hong Kong government. Experts from the Royal Dick School of Veterinary Studies and the Rosslyn Institute discussed a range of topics centred around improving animal health and welfare and how this knowledge can be translated into improved treatment for human conditions, the so-called One Health Initiative. One Health in one context would be thinking about um, how, we, uh, how veterinary medicine underpins human health in terms of uh, food security and livestock development, controlling zoonotic diseases and improving um, both human and animal health. And then One Health in another context, which we're also talking about here, is how we can potentially use uh, um, naturally occurring diseases in animals to model uh, human disease, or how we can use human diseases to model animal diseases. So as an example, um, uh, work that we're doing on cancer, for instance, uh, in veterinary medicine may have uh, direct um, uh, implications for what might be developed in human medicine. That was a theme which was returned to by many of the conference speakers, the idea that human and animal health are inextricably linked and that a holistic approach that addresses the needs of more than one species is required, an approach pioneered by Edinburgh through its decision to place human and animal scientists within one college. Last year is our first time we visit Edinburgh University uh, because we heard about Edinburgh University is the first university to have a One Health program. Uh, that's why we pay a side visit to Edmund Yudi. We uh, and our director are uh, deeply impressed about the, uh, the, the, the professors, the, uh, the dean and all the others to uh, have a concept of One Health, One World. Uh, that's why we collaborate with Edinburgh Uni to uh, have a more collaboration. As well as the Hong Kong government, Edinburgh is also collaborating with the local SPCA, with Professor Nat Warren and her colleagues at the Jean Marshig International Centre for Animal Welfare Education, highlighting the benefits to animals and humans of improved welfare standards. Edinburgh's been really good as a partner, um, you know, going back for five or six years we've been working together both as um, somebody to consult with and, and think about initiatives that we may want to develop on our own but also to partner with Edinburgh. So um, in terms of um, general aspects we have a lot of veterinary students that come to see practice with us and we do actually employ Edinburgh graduate, graduates if they come back to us um, in Hong Kong. So we have that be beneficial aspect. Um, we've also got um, a potential there with the partnership with Hong Kong University where um, Hong Kong students uh, who are already enrolled in undergraduate degrees get the opportunity to go overseas and also get an experience um, in Edinburgh as well and may then go on to do a veterinary course which is quite important because it is important to have locally grown talent that understand the, um, the sort of environment and the economics in Hong Kong when you're coming back to teach to practice veterinary medicine or get involved in other aspects um, in terms of research or public health. One of Hong Kong's biggest health problems concerns avian flu, which has killed hundreds of people in China. Its tendency to mutate means it's a virus which is hard to tackle. You can view Hong Kong as the epicentre of, of, where, of where the greatest danger lies in many ways. It was the start of the, of the 97 outbreak that has prompted a decade of worry over H5N1. It's near to the epicentre of H7N9 that's causing so much trouble now. Um, but it would be foolish to view it as a local problem only, because if there's one thing we know about flu is that it becomes a global problem very, very quickly. Um, so it's too big a problem to leave to any one group of people. We'll only control it by working in concert. Better treatments for diseases such as avian flu are likely to centre on the use of gene technology, an area in which Edinburgh is a world leader. Many scientists argue that such an approach is not only more effective for producers, it improves animal welfare too. We really don't own up to the losses, the economic losses and the welfare consequences as well of disease in farm animals and although we do have vaccines, a lot of them are not particularly effective. Um, I don't have figures for losses in the poultry industry 
um, annually, but I know that, for example, pig production in the US is thought to be reduced by about 10% because of flu, which is always cycling around the commercial uh, production of pigs. So they're really big challenges. And of course, with chickens, if they get uh, bird flu, we deal with it by slaughtering out uh, many millions of chickens to control the infection. The conference discussed many other topics, including how to manage emerging diseases in wildlife more effectively, an examination of how advances in horse medicine can be translated into improved human care, an exploration of how vitamin D status in cats and dogs can indicate various health issues, and a discussion of new biotechnology and its ability to improve food security. More unusual subjects were also covered, including the challenge posed by feral cattle in Hong Kong. Dr Stephen Benton, a vet with the Hong Kong government, has studied the animals for some years, which were abandoned by farmers who moved to the city many years ago. It's a very good environment for them in general because they have plenty to eat, um, they have fresh water, and so their numbers will tend to increase. Um, but that does occasionally bring them into conflict with human activities if they're wandering up and down the roads, busy roads, um, or sometimes they will go into people's property. Um, and some people uh, don't like cow manure and things like that around, so we do, ha we do get complaints from time to time. As a result, Dr Benton and his colleagues have embarked on a programme of population control, castrating the males and using a drug to treat the females. We're looking into a contraceptive uh, vaccine called Gonicon, and that's been used in several different species. It's been uh, developed by the US Department of Agriculture, and it's been uh, researched quite extensively in um, white-tailed deer, wild boar, uh, feral horses, and, and uh, these species. But I guess because there isn't a generally a worldwide uh, problem with uh, feral cattle, overpopulation. The, this drug hasn't really been looked at very much in cattle uh, so far. Uh, some Australian researchers have been looking at it and um, we've also been looking at it in, in Hong Kong. The conference ended with the signing of a memorandum of understanding between the university and the Hong Kong government, enabling more collaboration and knowledge exchange. The university needs to form partnerships around the world because we have a common interest worldwide in the problem of food security, of ensuring that we can produce enough protein to feed the world in 2050. And the only way that's going to happen is if we improve the productivity of both our plants and animals.